Furthermore, without much ado, we move over to the simple formulae that govern the concepts of differentiation. Now, before we move into the formulae, we just want to get a little more clearer about the concept of constants and variables because they are a very big concept over here. They play a very important role. Now, here if you see when you are talking about x, x is a variable. Okay, while n, we take it as a constant. So, numbers like n, so it could be something like x raised to 6. So, here x is a variable, 6 is a constant. So, terms like a, b, c, d, n, etc. with respect to derivative will be taken as constants. So, this is going to be x raised to 6, so x raised to n. Now, what is e raised to x? We know e is a special irrational number. It is an irrational number which is neither terminating nor recurring. You can't call it, it is a constant, but its value is not exactly determinable. Unlike, uh, say, uh, 5 by 10, which is 0 0.5, it's determinable. But e's value is not determinable because it is an irrational number between 2 and 3, so its value is 2 point odd. It goes on and on, neither recurring nor terminating. So, it is a special number. So, here e, which is of course very much used in the concepts of logarithm, e raised to x, here of course the power is the variable. So, e is a special number, x is the power, which is a variable. So, how do you differentiate these kind of functions? We will be having separate, because the following section is going to do with various types of formulae involved with this. Then, you have a raised to x. Now, here a is a constant, while x is a variable. This is almost an inverse of the first formula. Here you had x is raised to a number. Here a number has been raised to x. So, you have a constant being raised to a variable. How do you find the derivative? There is a standard formula for this. So, here you have a variable raised to a constant. Here you have a special number raised to a variable. Here you have a constant raised to a variable. And finally, you have a variable raised to a variable. So, variable raised to the same variable. Now, each of them is filled with a huge lot of possibilities. So, take, tackling each of these cases is very, very different from the way e, the other one is tackled. So, x raised to n has a different formula, e raised to x has a different formula, a raised to x has a different formula, x raised to x has a different way of solving. So, hence in such a case, we need to be very clear the moment an expression is given to you, which kind of an expression is it, which among these is a variable. Even something like this, say if you have an implicit function, x square y plus x y square, x raised to 5, plus y raised to 5, plus 5 raised to x. Each of these is a different kind. So, here you have two variables, here you have two variables, y is also raised. So, y's derivative has to be found in a different way, x's derivative has to be found in a different way, this one's in a different way, this one's in a different way, this one's in a different way, and if it is 7, its derivative will be a different thing. Again, as I say, now don't get baffled by all this uh, too many rules. As you start using them again and again, it will be an easy cakewalk for you. Okay, furthermore, 